Welcome to Open House. Hey everyone, I'm Laura Stevens and I'm a first year here at LSU School of Veterinary Medicine. And today I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about the rainforest and the kinds of animals that live there. So fun fact, the rainforest is actually one of the biggest, oldest, and most diverse ecosystems in the whole world. They have mammals, birds, reptiles, everything you can think of. One species in particular that lives in the rainforest is the Bengal tiger. And if you know anything about the Bengal tiger, you'll know that they're a carnivore. They're one of the largest carnivores on the planet. And they're actually critically endangered. So in this skull, you can't really tell because the teeth are a little broken. But if you look up close, you can see where their canine teeth used to be and the little nubs. Can you imagine how huge those were? Um, they use these canine teeth to tear at their prey. And then they use their back molars our school mascot, Mike the Tiger, is actually a Bengal and Siberian Tiger mix. Okay, so thank you for visiting the rainforest with me. Now I'm gonna take a trip to the deciduous forest to teach you a little bit more. All right guys, so now we're in the deciduous forest. And for any of you guys from Louisiana or really anywhere in the Southern United States, you're probably pretty familiar with these forests. Um, these are the forests where the trees change colors in the winter and then fall off and then they'll come back in the spring and summer as green luscious trees. So in these forests you'll find lots of different animals, um, specifically some ungulates. This skull is actually a forest bongo skull and though these specific animals don't live in the deciduous forests in the southern United States, you find other ungulates similar to this in our deciduous forest here in the United States. So this forest bongo actually has some really unique horns. Normally their horns will come up and curve in together. Um, this one, I'm not really sure what happened, but this is a really unique characteristic for this specific specimen. Thank you guys for visiting the forest with me and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Hello everybody, my name is Olivia and I'm a first year student here at LSU. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the mountain and sky. So first of all, before I get into the animals that we're gonna talk about, I wanted to tell you exactly what a mountain is. A mountain is anything that rises a thousand feet above its surroundings. You might notice that as you go up a mountain, there are fewer plants and animals. This is because it's much colder and there's less oxygen available at the top of the mountain. However, there are still some pretty cool animals that you can find living there. The animals we're gonna to talk to you about today can be found in the Rocky Mountains. Now, depending on where you are in the world, you might notice some different habitats and some different uh, animals that live on the mountains. So the first animal we're gonna to talk to you about today is the um, mountain goat. Now, the skull we have over here is actually a skull of a domestic goat like you might see at a petting zoo or on a farm. And actually, the mountain goat is more closely related to an antelope than it is the domestic goat. You might be wondering how they can live way up in the mountains since it's so cold. They have a thick double woolly coat that allows them to survive in temperatures as low as negative 51 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty cold. The next animal we're gonna be talking to you about today, you can also find in the Rocky Mountains, and that's the mountain lion or the cougar. They can run up to 45 miles per hour and can jump over 15 feet high. One cool thing about the mountain lion is that its babies are born with spots and blue eyes, but both of those disappear as they get older. Now this next animal we're gonna to talk to you about, you might not see on the mountains, but you may have seen it flying through the skies. What we have here is a red-tailed hawk, which is one of the most widely distributed birds in America. They are very easily identifiable as adults because of the reddish brown tail that they have. They prefer to live in open forests with a lot of open land around them so they can hunt for small animals, small birds, and reptiles. I hope you all had fun and learned a little bit. Thanks for flying by. Hi fellow animal lovers, my name is Destiny and I'm a first year student here at LSU's vet school and I'm going to take you on a journey through the African savanna. The first animal I'm going to talk about is the rhino. The rhino can weigh almost 7,000 pounds, but he only eats grass and leaves. So as you can imagine, that's a lot of grass. Their horns, they have two of them, are made of keratin and that's the same thing your fingernails are made of. 
Rhinos can't speak like we do, but they do still communicate with each other via grunts, sneezes, honks, and many other different sounds. They also communicate with each other, and this is kind of gross, but with their poo. Rhinos love the mud. They actually use the mud to cool themselves off in the same way that a pig would on the farm. The next animal I'm gonna talk about is the antelope. The antelope is what's called an even-toed ungulate, which means that their foot has two toes instead of one. The antelope has a great sense for its surroundings and can sense predators from far away. If they see a predator coming, they will run, and they can run at almost 43 miles an hour, which is twice as fast as a human. The antelope's horns grow for their entire lives, and they can be either straight, such as this one, curved or spiral shaped. And um, we also have here the skull of a gazelle, which is essentially a small antelope. Things that these animals have in common is that they all eat grass and leaves, making them herbivores. But there are carnivores as well, which are meat eaters that live in the savanna. Can you think of one? That's right, lions. There's also cheetahs and crocodiles. Crocodiles live in the water, and they look a lot like alligators, but with skinnier noses. Giraffes are the world's tallest land mammal. They can grow to be close to 18 feet tall. And just how tall is 18 feet? That's more than three refrigerators stocked on top of each other. The giraffe's tongue is about 20 inches long, which is almost two feet. And believe it or not, the giraffe has the same number of bones in its neck as you. Their bones are just much bigger. An adult giraffe's foot is roughly the size of a dinner plate, and giraffes spend most of their entire lives standing up. So the joints in their legs have evolved to help them do this. If you or I tried this, we'd fall over. So I hope you guys enjoyed our trip through the African savanna, and we hope to see you again soon. Let's see if we can figure out what animal has this type of shell. That's right, an armadillo has this type of shell. So armadillos, their shell will help serve as armor and their shell is made up of overlapping plates. If you count the plates on the shell, that can help you figure out what type of species the armadillo is. Have you ever seen on TV where an armadillo will roll up into a ball? Well, only armadillos that have three overlapping plates on their shell can do that. I thought all armadillos could do that before, so I didn't know that, and I think that's pretty cool. Now, we have a very special guest here with us today. His name is Fern, it's short for Fernando, and he is the pet of one of the vet school students here, and a very dear friend of mine. Fern is a leopard gecko. The spots on Fern's body help camouflage him among the rocks and the sand of the desert. His, fat, his tail stores fat for him so he's able to hide longer from predators without needing food. Leopard geckos shed more than reptiles usually do to hide their scent from predators. Leopard geckos like fern are usually pretty docile pets. However, it is very important to know how to care for a specific animal before you get that animal, especially with exotic animals like fern that need very specific care. All right, that's everything I wanted to show you in the desert. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too.